<laughs> Our guest in this segment is Ron Stevens, superintendent of schools in Berkeley County. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Such a history lesson. <laughs> yeah. Right? Such a history lesson this early in the school year. Yeah. I'll, I'll bet. Uh, I figured you might know that, Bill, having grown up in Tennessee, that might have been something that was in the history books. But I'll bet most people in the country don't know that. And, and I grew up in the western part where they had no boundary. The yeah. western part. <laughs> Big backyard. <laughs> Big backyard. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ron, as you get ready to start this uh, school year, do we have an idea of what the total student population in Berkeley County Schools will be this year? Well, we've um, – yes and no. We, we've had some issues with um, – with the uh, attendance portion of Weavis 2.0, 25 counties uh, across the state um, had difficulty with that the first couple of days. Um, some hand counting at, at preliminary uh, numbers have us a uh, little bit over 20,000 students, which would be the first year that they would be there. Uh, there will be some in and out and some settling here. Um, you know, officially, our last count went back to last October. The state has us listed at uh, 19855 and mm -hmm. um, you know with normal growth we uh, expect to be above that Dylan sent to me a text that the substitute pay this year is at $156 a day Dylan I'm not sure if you're, you're by your mic or not there I can't see your line bill I am. yeah so that and that's more than you got last year um, I'm I think it's a little higher <laughs> than it was last year it's a Sometimes it depends on your how many years of experience you've been. I think the rate for substitutes is flat, though, no matter how many years you've been substituting, unless you're in the same classroom consecutively as a long-term sub, 11-plus days, then I believe it can go up based on years of experience. He's so knowledgeable. He's a, he's, well, he's a teacher. He's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. That is actually correct. That day-to-day -day rate stays the same. Very good. And if you're in a position for longer than longer than 10 days on that 11th day, there is there's an increase. There's actually another increase, uh, I think, at 30 um, days. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have 250 perm subs uh, in positions, permanent subs in positions uh, this year uh, due to growth. So uh, right now there's only 14 vacancies. Uh, across the That's state keep thing. you know keep in mind we've you know it's one of the largest businesses in the state we're you know we're um we have uh largest employer in, in berkeley county and with the with the number of employees that we have uh, you know positions that we have 14 vacancies is not bad as far as the teachers now on the other side of the of the ledger we have um throughout the summer we've posted over 300 service positions and filled um 258 of those we still have 60 open service positions mm -hmm. um, are those primarily in one area ron is it bus yes. drivers or thank you for asking yeah. that did you talk to me before i this? did not and we did not talk in french before no this, no we right? did not we did not Don't we talked about up. it yeah yeah <laughs> right right um no they are primarily uh, approximately half of those are in our are among the aides um okay and you know that can be traced back to the the inclusion the addition of the the aides this year um you know we've we've moved around and filled the positions our, our first grade aides we look pretty good for the the positions that were created but they moved from one aid position to those positions so um even though we have the first grade aides pretty well pretty well filled we've they've caused vacancies in other areas uh, just finding Finding people, that's that's going to be a challenge across the state. Yeah, Crusher Hornby just texted me that a uh, bus was canceled uh, today, and I assume that means mm -hmm. because of a lack of a driver. Absolutely. Right. What, Absolutely. what are the options when that happens, Ron? Well, uh, there are multiple things that, that we do before a run is canceled. And, again, just like I said, keep in mind that we've got uh, the largest employer, the largest transportation system in, in the state, and um, – over 300 drivers and things are going to come up. Uh, we are seeking um, to grow our substitute numbers, and we've got 16. I think it's 16 that are going to be um, coming uh, over the next few weeks who are going to be certified. But it takes time, uh, and you want it to take time for that position of all of them. We want to make sure that they they uh, know what they're doing when they're when they're driving those buses. Um, but when uh, when when a driver is notifying um, our director that they're going to be out, uh, there there are plans 
for other drivers to be able to pick up those runs. Um, and it just depends on how many of those are, are taking place. Um, it could be that nobody knows when, when someone is out because there's a plan and it comes into place and takes care of that. But when a, when a run is canceled, um, we haven't been able to um, organize it so that other, other drivers can cover that. What happens to those kids? Do they just stay home that day if the parents can't get them to school or what? Well, um, you know, we hope that parents have an alternate plan and are able to get them to school. But, um, you know, without that transportation, um, that would be an option, yeah. Ron, I have a question about the uh, vacancy in just a second, but talking about school drivers, uh, school bus drivers, we tend to think, at least I tend to think, of just kind of this void. A kid gets on the school bus and is dropped off after uh, several minutes or several, several minutes. Uh, I have a friend who retired from the computer industry as a fairly senior position. He's taken a job as a school bus driver. Uh, he's bought into it 100%. He plays uh, geography games with the students on every one, and every day is a different one. Prior to school, he called every one of the teachers, every one of the parents, introduced himself, and gave him his telephone number. Uh, so these bus drivers, if he's an example, they are an extension of this phenomenal job that teachers are doing. Absolutely. So. The, <clears throat> they are the first uh, face that the kids yeah. see every day yeah. all, all year long. And we have 240 routes yeah. that, we, that we run throughout the county with over 20,000 stops in the morning and afternoon added together that that's that's a significant um a significant number of stops that we have um for for berkeley county alone you know servicing at this time roughly 75 percent of our student population will be on a bus so it's about fifteen thousand. so that's a now that's a big now, number for my question i was intrigued when you said only 14 vacancies in the mm -hmm. teachers i'd been i'd been led to believe mm -hmm. at least i thought i had that it was much larger than that now these okay. 14 vacancies that include both the permanent and the substitutes okay. no okay, okay. But 14 vacancies mean that these are these are empty areas and we are actively seeking for someone today to fill those roles and um and until that happens, the same thing I was talking about, sharing runs for yeah. drivers, we have to share those kids throughout other other classrooms so, until so those are empty. Yeah, so basically, Ron, then somebody takes their planning period and goes cover a class, which yes, is obviously Yes, that, that not. is one option, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And other options would be to divide the students up to go to other classrooms. Gotcha. It really depends on state um, um, student-teacher ratios. We can't exceed those, so... Um, it, it's a little bit different depending on what level you're talking about, the high school level that they, they're just absorbed into in the classroom. Secondary level generally is a. Yeah, I'm, I, excuse me, Maria, just a second. A clarification, I'm, I'm confused now. Uh, of okay. the 14 vacancies, is that in the permanent side? And then okay. do you have a, sep a separate category for the temporary uh, substitute teachers? Okay, let, let me try to. Yeah. I, I could see that in your eyes. So yeah. let, let me see if I can uh, clarify that. Those are vacancies that are empty. Uh, we still have to post the positions that all of the substitutes are in. Uh, we're required to keep those posted um, and to, to look for certified people for those positions. So there are still that 250 perm, those 250 perm subs, those positions still have to be posted. And if somebody were to drop into Berkeley County with a certification and be able to to uh, teach that and be a highly qualified teacher, we're required to um, interview that person and, and see if they would fit in. So I, I read something the other day about students who want to transfer into schools that aren't their home schools per se. How does that factor into, I mean, do you grant the transfer? And then of course you've got the whole sports transfer piece sort of fallen into that but talk a little bit about that and how you make those decisions for <laughs> you're That's, looking I, I tell you oh that. my goodness sorry he already rolled his eyes i no, know I, I just i'm taking a deep breath because okay. it's a long answer and it, it is it is quite complicated um for the transfer rules um mm -hmm. you know and that's kind of with the college portal for athlete uh athletics or athletes um 
people tend to think that that's the same thing that takes place in high school, and it is not. Um, there is a there is a procedure that people have to uh, request permission to transfer, and there are different rules for different different areas. Within Berkeley County, there is a there's an in county transfer procedure. Okay. There is an out of county transfer procedure. There's an out of state um, procedure. We those are policies that we have to um, we have to have. And that is, if someone was listening to a recent board meeting, that that's one of our policies that that we've recently gone over and, and adopted. So, um, you know, I can answer specific questions about that, but to talk about the whole thing might sure. might take the whole segment. So. Um, <laughs> Re- re- recruitment of both teachers and the, and the service staff has to be a very important part of your job. Looking at the teachers for a moment, and we hear that the uh, that every state, including the uh, states surrounding us, are have teacher shortage. What is your how aggressive and what is your approach that you take to recruit new teachers? Do you concentrate on the West Virginia schools? Do you go blanket to the surrounding areas? How do you do that? How do you get a leg up on the surrounding area? Well, if if you've got any ideas uh, <laughs> about that, let us know. I think that that would be that's desired by every school district in yeah, America. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, our our plan, our HR department takes a, a comprehensive look at where are where what is the likelihood that that certain areas will provide applicants. You know, it's nice to go and recruit. You know, we don't want to miss our West Virginia schools because we want to be represented. Um, but is that where we're going to be able to pull a majority of the people to fill our jobs? Is it the, you know, the Pittsburgh Consortium? The, the you know, we travel, you know, mainly on the, in the regional area here in the East Coast areas um, and hit a lot of the, those um, job fairs. And, it's it really depends year to year who has how many graduate schools have and how many people are going to attend we weigh each of those but um you know sometimes you go and there's only there's low numbers and there's only a couple of uh, applicants and we and we get both of them and you know sometimes you go someplace that there's a there's a thousand people and uh, the competition is so high that we, we don't get any of them so it's it's really quite random, and it really depends on what the what the applicant has in mind. Um, but we've got a really good sales pitch, uh, you know. We 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 have a perfect blend of being in in the neighborhood of all of the the arts and culture of the large, you know, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, even uh, regions. But we're also, you know, close to small town and and values and scenic beauty and you know and all, all of those kinds of things so we feel like we've got a good package and when we go out there we're, we're competitive with with other districts I, is, i'm sorry Marie, go no, ahead. i was just gonna say is money the bottom line not for everyone correct you know, you know for <laughs> and if you can remember coming out of college and looking for that first job money talks uh, you know I'm not going to lie about that mm-hmm. you know we know that money talks for for those young people who are looking for their first position um but what we're finding now across America is there are more transition people who are coming to education a little bit later in life. I noticed and that at the, yes. at the breakfast. You're I was so looking observant. around going, okay, they all look either 15 or like 45. Well, didn't Tina <laughs> Combs know? do that? Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. So, you know, we feel like with that group of people, they're looking for stability. They're looking for a home. They're looking for, you know, something a little bit different. So, you know, you just have to look at who's, Who's applying for the jobs and and adjust? We think we have a, a package for all ages and and experiences, but um, you know you just have to be willing to make that change when you're talking to them. At this stage in, in the season, uh, Ron, I suspect you have a thousand balls in the air, and uh, the <laughs> one that you probably concentrate the most on is the recruitment and having a full staff and teacher service position. What's the second or third ball that you spend most of your time on well specifically talking about this week you know making sure that we get the students 
to school that we have the proper information from the parents on you know that it's critical um, this is the time where we're getting the information from the parents their emergency contact information what's the plan if if you know if they have to leave school early what if your child gets sick um, you know so for the younger students it's extremely important to get to get that routine reestablished um, to try not to interrupt the day uh, try to keep that as normal as possible. You know, they're coming out of the city park and swimming pool and popsicles all day long, you know, and, and now they're in, sitting in a in a classroom. And it's it's a tough change. I, I, You know, it was 50 years ago this month for me for my first bus trip. So uh, uh, that's when they pulled up to my apartment when I was five and they put me on a bus. It's a big day. It was a big day. And, and he, he, I can still remember that. Mm-hmm. So we have to realize that our the kids are going to remember these these types of things. So we want to make a positive impression for them. Keep it keep that transition as, as smooth as possible. You know, trying to fill routes. Uh, we've had a number of, of drivers that you know they, things happen. You know, they sure. they're normal community people like everybody else. They there's sickness. There's family issues. Um, their parents as well. And so we have been able to cover that you know, or have a plan to cover that, you know, until this morning. So now we've got to make sure that we communicate and get that stuff uh, taken care of. So the the main thing for me is keeping the main thing, the main thing. Let's, let's, let's get the students in school. Let's, let's, let's give them a good experience. Let's have them looking forward to coming tomorrow. Um, you know, so that's, that's probably the biggest one. Um, and then you look at, you know, we've got to establish things for our, our fall activities. We've got, you know, you mentioned trying to make sure, you know, employees, that's that's going to be for us year-round now. You know, with growth, we're, we're going to be uh, looking for employees year-round. So those are probably some of the biggest things. Ron Stevens is our guest. He is the superintendent of schools in Berkeley County, was the interim superintendent and uh, or acting, and, and then uh, named permanent superintendent on a one-year contract. So mm-hmm. as you approach this year now, as the job is firmly yours, but because of the one-year status, you can see what the end date is from here. Yeah. How do you approach this year as opposed to when you were interim? Well, f- uh, um First of all, I've been in this county for 20 plus years in education for 30 plus years. I like it here. My family was raised here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to fight to stay where where I am. I'm fighting for Berkeley County, and uh, you know I, I understand the thought process that goes the thought process that goes behind um, you know the hiring and and all that. But um, you know I I think that we're going to do we're going to be doing some really good things as far as the transition. Um, you know, they can say interim in front of of the tag last year, but it was real. It was full time. It's it's the real deal, um, and we're we're doing it again this year. So, um, the, it makes it a little bit challenging when you're talking to people about a plan for down the road. Um, our our bond projects, so, you know, the building, you know, the relationships that you build with with people for that, the hiring of of people. Um, we're talking about raising achievement and coming up with plans for that. Um, it does make it a little bit challenging for me to sell to to those people that, you know, we're doing this for the county, for our students. Um, you know, if it's not me, it's going to be somebody t- trying to take care of Berkeley County. I hope it's me. From a practical standpoint, is there a certain time during the course of this year when you have to begin interviewing to keep the job for next year and, and at what point does that arrive well you know it's, it's unique you know to say the least it's unique to to be in the in the one year setting because um there are requirements that our board has to has to follow to to make sure that there is a and a superintendent named and they have to do evaluations at certain times and you know, for me, every day is an interview. Every every single day, everything that I'm doing, um, you know, for Berkeley County is is part of the interview process. I'm just that's the way I believe it. And um, you know, hopefully by mid year, they'll you know there will be some um, 
some belief in, in what we're doing and maybe we'll be able to extend and, and take care of things. I, I really don't know the details of mm-hmm. how the board's going to go for <clears throat> for a future contract or, or interviews or how they're going to handle that. Ron, we're, go- we're going to have the sheriff in a couple of minutes. Uh, how many SROs do we have in place now? Okay, we, we have four. Four. We have, we have okay. an SRO in each uh, of our school districts. Uh, they're stationed at the high schools, <clears throat> but they do. Um, they are available to service, you know, the, the surrounding areas. Now, one of uh, three of those SROs are through the sheriff's department, and one is through the um, Martinsburg City Police. And do they rotate on an, on a regular basis? Um, we, we've done it a variety of different ways. Right now, we're we're we believe establishing a relationship with one individual primarily. Uh, now there's substitutes who will come in and serve and some other people will be in there. But right now it's primarily one person mm-hmm. at, at each location. And, um, you know, our in my former role, we would meet about the first or second week of school and you know, make sure that everybody was on track and everybody knew everybody. And um, I expect that that will be taking place soon. And, who, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mary. Well, I was just going to say, and do you believe there's an acute need um, to – um, to move that down, so say at the middle school level. Oh my gosh! Um. You know, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yes, uh, <laughs> you know, there is creating a safe environment is one thing. Creating uh, a safe environment so that the parents uh, of our younger students feel that safe environment is totally something else. You know, and it's the you know, I always tell people it's the it's the police car with its lights on on Interstate 81. What do you do when you see it? You slow down. Uh, so having the presence at at our elementary schools would simply slow down anything that you know the thoughts that people may have to to harm that population. So <clears throat> would I be willing to accept that? Absolutely. It, you know, have to be. We have to realize that there are you know a lot of mitigating factors that sure. kind of slow that down but yeah uh, ron who is Bill, most- I, I gotta cut you off here because we're, mm-hmm. we're running out of time and he's got a, he's got appointments he has to get to too um but i want to give you the final chance for your shout outs here today oh, too to you. start the school year ron and i don't want to make you late for your next meetings either no the, the first thing is i, I just want to say thank you to um uh, to you guys for having me in here um and our substitute teacher behind the glass uh is doing dylan. a great job dylan is uh you know, very knowledgeable. Um, thank you to our, our employees who have helped us have one of the smoothest openings that we've had in a long time. Um, and, you know, I, I expect that we're going to continue that. I also want to give a special shout out. We recognized a young lady on Monday, um, a, a Sydney Bostic, who was a student at Spring Mills High School, and she participated in the, in the International Science and Engineering Fair. Uh, fantastic young lady, and I just want to give her a shout out. Um, wanted to say thank you to all of our Grow Your Own employees. One of the things that I did want to mention is that we have 58 Berkeley County Schools graduates who are serving as uh, teachers in our classrooms this year. The 58 new ones this year. Um, so that shows that people like it here, want to stay here, and want to be here. Excellent. And, and I think that's that's. Uh, that says a lot for Berkeley County Schools. Hopefully so. it shows that the pay is catching up a little bit, at least a little bit. I hope so. All right, so I they can so. stay. Ron, good to see you again. Yeah, thank you. It was good to be here. Hope to talk to you again next month, sir. I'll be here.